Hi, Wroclaw. Thank you for having me here, and I'm happy to to talk about data science today and about I don't know all those kind of related things. So you can see the, you can see the title here and data science for all. And just uh, one minute later, we will understand who who this all are. So, but uh, before begin, uh, I'd like to. Uh, to recall uh, to recall one of my uh, terriblest uh, mistake I did two years ago uh, at uh, New York uh, conference, I prepared a really great talk. It was filled with a very neatly uh, composed information, and it's it like to, to some persons, but it was a little bit uh, out of auditory, and it lasted for thirty minutes. It was overwhelmingly more than it, it should be and after this talk uh, talk uh, I had a really great uh, advice I think one of the greatest advice uh, in, in my life so one guy I don't remember his name but it's very very I say wise guy uh, he said to me that the greatest talk he heard in uh, in his life lasted one minute so Unfortunately, this talk will last, I think, uh, a little bit more, but I will try it, uh, to be brief and uh, pretty fast. So, all these uh, words, all these combinations of words, I, uh, words uh, I think you've heard uh, quite frequently today, this artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, it all sounds, you know, very delicious, like, 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 like this food. But uh, we we need to uh, understand the terms uh, to use them uh, uh, in appropriate way, and we need to understand them to apply them uh, where it is needed. And uh, artificial intelligence it's a kind of umbrella term for you to know. So. Actually, it contains all this machine learning, computer vision, uh, natural language processing, what else, robotics, and some uh, some other things. Machine learning is just a combination of methods of all and well-known mathematics that is used to, you know, to to make a predictions from from the already known uh, information. And data science is again, it's kind of umbrella term that uh, uh, includes all these methods that uh, I used to manipulate with data, to use, uh, to use data to make uh, predictions and forecasts. That is, it's a, not, a, not an exact definition, but I, I think it's quite enough for uh, our today's talk. And so what is, uh, yeah, oh, here, okay. Okay, so I think it's also important to understand that these terms are usually means for most of us, uh, especially for developers, a kind of way to escape a daily routine of developing. So we usually think that machine learning is something that can can uh, make uh, our life bereft of these boring things like everyday programming and creating classes and blah, blah, blah. Might be might be but it i think it depends it depends on situation so and this is the real world example i uh, i made this photo on my way uh, to Wroclaw, and i you know the quality is pretty pretty bad but it uh, doesn't matter and for those who uh, who don't know russian or f forgot it uh, i will translate it so what is written here? It is written that artificial intelligence can help you to uh, generate your personal kind of internet plan. It's uh, from uh, one of the internet providers in Russia. So you see the artificial intelligence is everywhere today. So even in this, it's a very, I don't know, it's a really deep within Russia in some kind of near the road cafe and you I made the artificial intelligence here. So today artificial intelligence uh, became a distinguishing feature not only a human but I think every appliance and um, today even fridge is able to to reason uh, to reason about 
what to buy and uh, I don't know, it, it, it should advise uh, it should advise you what to eat. So is it intelligence or not? Actually, it, uh, it is not just um, intelligence in a, in, in, in a general sense, in the sense on what we are in intelligent. So, and now who this all are? So all developers, projects managers, delivery managers and laymen. So they all need uh, different levels of understanding of what artificial intelligence is. So for developers, it is important to know all these methods and how to use them, where to apply it, metrics and all these kind of things quite uh, deep enough. For projects managers, it is not uh, necessary to be a data scientist to uh, to control the data science projects. But I think it is important to understand that data science is in part a craft, and uh, this knowledge is important to uh, you know to I don't know not to hurry up developers when. Um, for providing estimates for some task and not to wait some reasonable, meaningful estimates before the data is seen. So that is important. For delivery managers and, I don't know, I think it, we say the same for CEOs and all this, uh, top managers, it is important, again, not to be the data scientist, but it is important to understand what uh, what to expect from data science, what to expect from these matters, what they can provide for business, to understand the needs of business and to understand, not even to understand the business needs, but to anticipate the business needs and to understand how data science, how artificial intelligence, machine learning, all these umbrella terms can be used to solve the business problems. That is important. And I think this is a very different levels of uh, understanding, but it's a very high level under high level uh, overview of the problem. And for laymen, it is also very important for just a common man to understand what artificial intelligence is. Why? Because it uh, uh, it affects the proliferation of all these AI-based solutions uh, you know, in a real life because uh, we uh, we all heard about the artificial intelligence uh, Huawei, for example, artificial intelligence chip in in our smartphones. What does it mean? Should we afraid it or not? And uh, what is more important, should we afraid AI will take our job? It's a very hot topic today and uh, it's about the ethic in uh, autom uh, automatization and all this uh, AI-based solution adoption. And important step uh, have been done by uh, Finland uh, government. So this is uh, the topic from this uh, newspaper they wrote. So Finland is making its online AI crash course free to the world. So they created a kind of course that is available not for developers, not for mathematicians, not for these technical guys, technical savvy guys, but just for a common man, just to understand what does it mean that artificial intelligence is living in their smartphones. And this course, I think the main idea behind it is to prepare people not to afraid of it and to prepare people that uh, AI will not take their jobs. But nevertheless, it about jobs, it, it again, it, it depends on kind of jobs, unfortunately. And yeah. So I uh, here uh, I'm trying to answer the question, how to start, how to become data scientist. Uh, how to start uh, to be involved in all this uh, fancy machine learning research. I frequently asked about it. And uh, today, you know, I, I will answer, I don't know. So it depends on many, many factors. So you have uh, many courses, uh, online courses, like Coursera, Udemy, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what else, a lot. Uh, today we have a... Uh, kind of university programs dedicated to AI, machine learning, and uh, all these kind of things. You've seen that even a government can create a course for 
uh, for their citizens. So from my point of view, so my path to, uh, to data science it was not actually standard. So I, I have a physical education, I'm a, uh, a theoretical physicist and uh, I cannot say that uh, I'm data scientist, but I know how to solve optimization problems, how to solve, uh, how to do linear algebra, calculus and all these kind of things. And uh, for me, how to start depends on do you know math or don't you know it. So if you know math, it means that you can understand uh, the formulas behind all these methods, for example, linear regression. You can not just call this method from a scikit-learn, but you can understand how to interpret the, these results, how to understand it. Is it correct or not? You can check the formula because today, if you uh, uh, if you want to use something, some kind of sort of state of the art solutions, you need to take them from an article, from publications. But before do this, you need to evaluate it. You need to check it to understand uh, what is written there. Because many articles today are published not in peer-reviewed journals, but in our archive, and it just it, uh, the same as you put it uh, into your blog. The difference is pretty small. It, I think it only uh, influences the uh, audience that can uh, that, that will read it. So it's about knowing math. So knowing math can be um, advantage uh, can be advantages in doing data science. If you don't mount, don't know math, it doesn't mean that you cannot do data science. But today, data science without math, to me, it uh, it uh, it becomes kind of DevOps. So you you don't need to know what uh, what is beyond this. I don't know K means. You just you 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 can use auto ML. Auto ML is uh, positions as um, kind of things that uh, will uh, I don't know will will facilitate uh, the one's use of uh, machine learning methods. So, for example, you have a data, you put it into uh, some uh, AutoML platforms, or a, a lot of them. You have uh, Google the GCP, you have uh, the same uh, tools uh, in uh, Amazon Cloud. Uh, we have a freely available uh, branch of scikit-learn, and you put data into it. Uh, there is some magic beyond it, and voila you get a result you get a result that uh, you should uh, should uh, understand somehow and uh, this is more like a devops you know so just to upload data and get a result is it good might be it might be it's not that bad so this is the difference to to me so how to become the data scientist to learn courses, uh, online courses, or to, to study at university. So if you're already familiar with Mars, you can do this. If not, you can, you can nevertheless, you can uh, use all these libraries. So what is important here, uh, I think, is that uh, there is a difference between those who started, uh, who are starting to, to use uh, data science tools today and the one who are studying at universities. So we need to understand, we, uh, the one uh, who, who, who has this kind of physical, biological, this f fundamental classical education, that we will compete with the guys that... Uh, that did data science for kind of five years at universities, at uh, which have this feeling, the six six feeling of this uh, data science methods. So we will compete with them, and it it would be difficult, I would say. So, and this is a, uh, I like this quote. It's about uh, it's uh, the one, and uh, what that. Uh, I, I, I asked my colleague to, to say how to become data data scientist because he uh, I would say uh, he's a real data scientist now and uh, I will read it because I want this verse to sound in the uh, 
within the network. So intellectual honesty and the scientific method, as well as self-awareness, are of import in the endeavor. Do not deceive yourself into believing that something can be done mechanically and thoughtlessly without sacrificing the ability to reason about the credibility of the results. Keep a critical eye and be aware of the intellectual shortcuts you make and how they might affect the trade-off between practicality and trustworthiness. Owing up to it doesn't make it worse. So this is Dmitry Bubelink. We did uh, some pro projects with him in, uh, in, in data science and in kind of just a pure mass, I think, or it was a computational, some computational product. So what is important here is, uh, you see, the ability to reason about the credibility. This is very important and the knowledge of mass can uh, provide it for you. But, okay, so this idea, I, I love this, I love this quote. So here uh, in a classical talk, I think here should be some information collected from many sources, kind of Gartner, McKinsey, O'Reilly. But the idea behind all this, uh, all this information is, uh, is unique and uh, uh, all this uh, says us that AI will prevail and we should be ready for this. We should be ready for this and we should uh, understand now, just now, how to live with it but AI will prevail and even uh, G20 words about that we must be wise in adopting AI solutions, not uh, to, to make people to lose their uh, works. So it doesn't mean that it will stop the AI proliferation, but we must be wise. And in our last article with me, we said, a, exactly the same thing. We must be wise. So we must be wise about using AI to prolongate the life because, you know, this sacrificial question of, of life, how to, to live longer, how to live happier, how to live healthier life. And this problem is now tackling with the AI. But is it good? Is it to live longer is good? So I know it's kind of kind of strange question, yeah? But uh, this prolongation of life, it, um, it has really serious consequences in uh, uh, social and economical landscape of uh, every society. So, but nevertheless, I uh, today I found a very in interesting this curve from the Gartner, I think, and I just uh, dedicated one minute to it. Uh, what is I don't know, is it possible to, to is there a pointer or no? But on the top, I'm afraid to, to put something wrong. Okay, let it be. So what is important for me is data labeling and annotation. So this innovation trick is data labeling because data labeling is important because uh, the supervised method are of, um, extreme uh, accuracy can compare to uh, to the uh, unsupervised method but uh, for data labeling we today we use people we we uh, were labeling data by ourselves it, it take too much time it's too too expensive and to make uh, uh, automatic tools that can uh, do the things for us this will i don't know facilitate doing data science greatly uh, and here, yeah, the inflated expectation from AutoML, we uh, already talked about this. So AutoML will not need people and uh, it will make uh, data science cheaper. This is important. This is very important for proliferation of these matters. Chatbots, yeah, we all uh, heard about this, but chatbots contains, uh, I think, two layers. The first layer is Speech, speech recognition and we're extremely uh, good in, in this kind of things and uh, but beyond uh, speech recognition there is an NLP year, uh, layer and this uh, NLP we also uh, every day I think we uh, we get a news about that uh, NLP can now 
generate news, generate text that are indistinguishable, uh, indistinguished with with, uh, with uh, the text created generated by human. But it de it depends on metrics. Uh, uh, we used to, to compare. And again, digital ethics. I also already talked about this. It's about uh, adoption of AI in society. So, for example, uh, to use AI for self to, to create self-driving cars. Is it good or bad? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I will have uh, this kind of car because it's, you know, it's really hard to, to travel from Voronezh to Warsaw by myself. But uh, this uh, this kind of car will will take the jobs of, you know, the drivers or the taxi drivers. Is it good? I don't have an answer. So that is so quite quite nice. And again, GPU accelerations. This one. This FPGA accelerators, and uh, we already, I think we all, uh, already read about this, uh, the latest news about the acquisition or IPO of some Israel-based company that uh, uh, developed uh, FPGA chip exactly uh, dedicated to doing uh, machine learning things that will accelerate uh, machine learning. We must understand that the idea is not new. This kind of chips were created for doing uh, what is called molecular dynamics. It's for uh, a molecular simula simulation of uh, molecular uh, interactions, and uh, they were created in in nineties. So here, uh, at the end of the talk, I think uh, the good idea is to talk about something that you you know good and uh, you have a real uh, experience uh, in. So drug design. I will to to talk just a might be two or three minutes about drug design and how uh, artificial it can be used to to generate new drugs. I think uh, I think you all, uh, already heard about what is called precision medicine. It's a meta, it's a um, uh, application of prescriptions the drugs that are suitable especially for you especially for your metabolism, especially for your chemistry, for your genetics, and blah, 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 all this kind. This is precision medicine. For precision medicine, we need a precision methods. We need to uh, uh, understand what, what drugs to use. Today, uh, the principle of, uh, of medicine is uh, kind of, you know, from this trilogy of Tolkien, like the one to, to cure them all, you know, the one aspirin to all, but, in a, in a near, or I don't know how near, how close is the future when we will have our personal drugs. So might be it's close enough. So this is the idea behind the precision medicine. And there are a lot of direction, uh, directions in which we can uh, tackle the problem of precision medicine with AI. We can try to find, uh, I don't know, some genetic mutations and uh, to um, try to cluster this uh, the genetic data to, to, to find something uh, to, to find something common. For example, uh, uh, in, in recent paper, this is uh, exactly what have been done. So there are, uh, there is uh, such a disease which is called uh, ulcerative colitis and uh, within this disease there are two, two group of uh, people that uh, respond uh, differently on uh, different therapies. And it is very difficult or e even impossible to distinguish them with, uh, you know, standard tools like a blood test or something like that. But the guys uh, with, uh, uh, in combination of genetics and machine learning, uh, kind of clustering algorithm, they found uh, genes uh, which expression is responsible for uh, different type of responses. So they found two clusters, two separate and uh, different clusters, and uh, this knowledge helped to prescribe the, the most effective drug for appropriate uh, group of, group of uh, patients. This is a really good uh, example of uh, application of AI to, to medicine. What we did, so we tried to 
to generate new drug. New drug, it's not actually a drug that uh, can be, you know, can be used just already after we uh, we have written this formula. No, it's kind of lean that uh, after after being written can be some kind of uh, modified chemically and uh, there is a long way of uh, the long path of clinical trials but uh, the generation of new leads is, is very very difficult so uh, an expert human expert can produce um, something about 200 leads per year with ai with the model we build we can generate i don't know a billion of drugs a billion of leads just in one click yes but we need to evaluate this lead somehow and so we we have to understand that to work with uh, uh, to apply machine learning methods we need to understand how to encode drug properties so we have uh, just uh, you see we have just uh, two formulas for or if you don't know chemistry this should look quite should, should look quite similar but nevertheless these two drugs act differently in uh, different uh, organs the one uh, this one acts in uh, thyroid and uh, this one in liver and this one is, is not a drug at all uh, we generated it i don't know does it have uh, drug-like properties so after we somehow encode uh, the properties of a drug properties kind of uh, solubility melting temperature pff, i don't know pff, kind of binding energy to to some of the protein we can use the uh, we can apply the idea of machine learning similarity to find a similar drugs for example we know that these drugs is it's nice it's it, it, uh, it, it is nice but it ha it has some adverse uh, effects and we uh, we want to improve it somehow so we can try to find some similar drug but uh, among this uh, similar so we we can try to find something with with uh, something less toxic so we need to understand what is similarity and after we build a model in our case it was a generative model we can sample from uh, the distribution we can sample from the distribution drugs least so we uh, the model generates these these formulas. What is important here is that AI is not powerful enough today to uh, to generate drugs, to generate leads uh, alone. So it uh, it needs uh, an expert help, uh, an expert with the uh, domain knowledge to understand is this drug is a kind of lead like or drug like or not some some of those properties can be encoded again and can be uh, estimated computationally but nevertheless today we are only talking about ai augmenting human cognitive abilities that is this was a really really nice work and i hope it it will be continued so the last slide so it's not usual yeah so as the last slide the slides we it's common to write the end but i think so i think that we're just at the beginning at the beginning of this very interesting uh, journey journey into the world of ai of machine learning so today we we got a critical mass of this ai learning methods, uh, tools, and utilities that can be used to, to change our life. And yes, we're at the very, very beginning today. So let's see what will happen next. Thank you.